So you're standing in the heart of Yellowstone National Park. You're surrounded by forests, serene streams, and wildlife so majestic it feels like you've stepped into a painting. But then you hear a faint rumble underfoot. It's not a grizzly bear or a herd of bison. It's the Earth itself. That's Yellowstone. It's beautiful, sure, but also terrifying because beneath your feet lies one of the most dangerous ticking time bombs on the planet, a supervolcano. Now, when most people think Yellowstone, they think of Old Faithful, that iconic geyser blasting steam like clockwork. It's a tourist favorite, right? But here's the kicker. Old Faithful isn't just a natural wonder. It's the visible tip of a volcanic beast so massive it makes Mount St. Helens look like a backyard campfire. And yet, most of us treat Yellowstone like a casual vacation spot, snapping selfies, unaware of what's brewing beneath. Spoiler alert, it's not just hot water. Let's break it down. Yellowstone isn't a mountain-shaped volcano like you'd see in a textbook. It's a supervolcano, which is essentially a giant cauldron of magma lava before it erupts that spans roughly 30 by 45 miles. To put that in perspective, it's bigger than the state of Rhode Island. And the magma chamber underneath? That's about five miles deep, stretching wider and holding enough molten rock to fill the Grand Canyon several times over. Let that sink in. This isn't a regular volcano. It's a monster waiting to wake up. You're probably thinking, yeah, but it hasn't erupted in ages, right? True. Yellowstone's last major eruption happened about 640,000 years ago. Before that, another one 1.3 million years ago. Oh, and one even earlier, around 2.1 million years ago. Are you seeing a pattern here? These eruptions aren't just rare, they're catastrophic when they happen. Scientists estimate the blast from the last eruption ejected enough material to blanket much of North America in volcanic ash, with layers over 10 feet thick in some places. Imagine entire states buried under ash, crops dead, rivers clogged, air so toxic it'd make wearing a mask feel like child's play. And that's just the start. But here's the part most people don't talk about. It doesn't take a full-blown eruption to cause chaos. Yellowstone is constantly active, even if it looks peaceful. Take the geysers, for example. Old Faithful erupts every 90 minutes, shooting water heated by magma thousands of feet below. That's energy being released, pressure escaping, in a way. But not all pressure gets out, and when it doesn't, you get earthquakes. Yellowstone experiences hundreds of quakes every year, most too small to feel. But every shake is a reminder that this thing is alive. It's like the Earth's version of a stress ball, except when it snaps, it's game over. The magma beneath the park contains high levels of silica, which makes the lava thick and gooey. This type of magma traps gas more effectively, and when the pressure becomes too much, it explodes. Not just any explosion either. A Yellowstone eruption could be a thousand times more powerful than the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. You remember that one, right? That blast leveled forests, killed 57 people, and left a giant crater. Yellowstone would do all that and more on a continental scale. And it's not just the lava or the ash we'd need to worry about. There's the global impact. A Yellowstone eruption would pump so much ash and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere that it could block sunlight, triggering a volcanic winter. Crops would fail worldwide. Temperatures would plummet. It'd be like an extended nuclear winter minus the war. Scientists even have a term for it. The year without a summer. One eruption in 1815, Tambora in Indonesia, caused global temperatures to drop, leading to widespread famine. Yellowstone could make Tambora look tame. But don't just take my word for it. The U.S. Geological Survey monitors Yellowstone 24-7. They track ground deformation, basically how much the land is bulging or sinking due to magma movement. In some years, parts of Yellowstone rise several inches, that's magma pushing upward. The park also has sensors for gas emissions, measuring levels of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, which can spike when magma gets restless. It's like the volcano's mood ring, and trust me, you don't want to see it glowing angry red. There's even been talk of fixing Yellowstone. Back in 2017, NASA proposed an ambitious plan to drill into the magma chamber to release heat, potentially preventing an eruption. Sounds smart, right? Except that drilling into a supervolcano is about as risky as it sounds. 
One wrong move could destabilize the system and trigger the very thing you're trying to prevent. It's like poking a bear, except the bear is made of molten rock and gas, and its roar could destroy the world as we know it. And yet, despite all this, people keep asking, when will it erupt? Here's the frustrating answer. We don't know. Yellowstone doesn't operate on human timelines. It could erupt tomorrow, or it could stay dormant for another 100,000 years. What we do know is that the signs of activity are there. The ground movement, the earthquakes, the heat. Think of it as a pressure cooker. As long as the pressure stays manageable, everything's fine. But if that pressure gets too high, well, you get the idea. For locals, the supervolcano isn't just a scientific curiosity. It's a constant presence. People in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho grow up with the knowledge that their backyard could one day become ground zero for an extinction-level event. And yet, life goes on. They hike the trails, fish the rivers, and watch Old Faithful erupt like it's just another Tuesday. It's a strange mix of acceptance and ignorance. Maybe that's the only way to live with the threat. Pretend it's not there until it is. But it's not just about the locals. If Yellowstone erupts, it's a global issue. Airports would shut down from the ash clouds. Supply chains already fragile would crumble. Economies would tank. The world would feel the ripple effects for decades. And that's assuming we could even survive the immediate aftermath. Some scientists estimate that a Yellowstone eruption could wipe out a significant portion of the human population. Think about that the next time you're booking a flight to Yellowstone for a family vacation. Now, before you panic and start building a bunker, let's end on a somewhat hopeful note. The chances of a Yellowstone eruption happening in our lifetime are incredibly small, about 1 in 730,000 per year, according to experts. That's like winning the worst lottery imaginable. And because of modern science, we're better equipped than ever to monitor the situation. If Yellowstone starts showing signs of a major eruption, we'll likely have weeks, if not months, of warning. Enough time to evacuate, prepare, and hopefully survive. Yellowstone's old faithful might seem like a friendly geyser, but it's the calling card of a volcanic giant. A giant that, if awakened, could change life on Earth forever. It's a reminder of how small we are in the grand scheme of things, and how little control we really have over the forces of nature. If you liked this video and are asking yourself whether to like and subscribe, I would like to provide you with one more answer. Why not? And as always, I hope you have an amazing day.